to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. Ooh, Jay. Oh, 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 Jay. Oh, oh, oh. We got a lot of messages about that horse on the plane. A lot. <laughs> what? Just people were appalled at it. I mean, yeah. I it was flooded with them after that last episode, and I had posted it on Instagram because a lot of people didn't believe it was real. And then they went to my Instagram, and they were like, "Holy shit, man!" Like. That, that was real. She took a small pony on there. Mm. Two of the listeners, here's the interesting thing, saw her later that day and wrote in. They were like, dude, and they took pictures. They were, she was in Omaha somewhere. So I just walking around with the, the thing. Uh, other people had pictures of her walking up to the ticket counter with the horse. Yeah. So All of it gives me horrible anxiety. I mean, I would have lost, I, I, again, would have lost all of the shit inside of my body if, if if you were behind her. No, if I was next to her, because they you got to put the animal in front no, of. No, I mean like TSA, right? Yeah, she has to go through the thing. Yeah, yeah. You're already like shoes off. You have to take the thing. Yep. You would, I think, at that point, have lost had lost your mind. Me, a hundred percent. Yeah, with yeah. her. I'd, if I'd she was in front of you with the horse, I would have rode it right through the metal the, detector. Nope. Taking off the little harness. Yeah. Putting the. <laughs> You would have been like, are you fucking kidding me? I would have rode right through the metal detector and just said, look, if he is going on, I'm going through as well. I'm keeping my shoes on. I'm keeping my belt on. Uh, I'm keeping my Jesus chain on. And uh, I'm going right through the metal detector yeah. on the pony. If the horse can go. I can, the shoes can go. Yeah. If the horse can go, my yogurt can come. Yeah, right? Yeah. My uh, water bottle and my yogurt can come then. Somebody wrote in a, like something really funny. They just said, and I had to pay extra money for baggage for like yep. to check a bag. And it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, you can get a horse on a Shetland pony. So now they're going to have to have these like harnesses that go under the plane now. So that when the plane's flying, the horse can, can be underneath. I don't Hanging. know. The horse was standing up the whole flight. So. I'm just saying now Now we've set a precedent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah, now yeah. it's like, oh, so if you want to take your horse anywhere now, people are going to be like, oh, okay. Yeah. I'll just bring my horse. This, this madness has got to end all the way around with this shit. Like, yeah, but it won't. I think it will with this. Like, you can't take a horse on there. They, they stopped that peacock, remember? That's what I do understand is stopping the peacock but mm -hmm. allowing the horse. Well, the peacock, uh, it's a lot of feathers. A little bit more unpredictable. Okay. Um, both are ridiculous, James. All of this shit is ridiculous. I, look, I go back to this all the time, and, and I, I don't know if I've said it out loud on this show or not, but if I have, forgive me. Um, we have friends, a friend, who takes his fucking dog everywhere. Mm. And you know. it is a bigger dog. Sure. Probably. What, what One of the you? scary, most more controversial breeds. It's a fucking pit bull is what it is. We're just going to say a controversial breed. I'm sure people in the audience have them. Don't breed shame me. Don't breed shame me. Somebody said that to me after I said I was in a conversation with somebody and I was like, hey, Oh, because we, after like the ninth restaurant we had gone to where this fucking dog had to go with him for mm -hmm. no reason. Mm -hmm. um, he's not a veteran either, by the way. Served no, no military, no nothing. Mm -hmm. um, somebody was like, what kind of what kind of dog is that? And I was like, well, before you reach out your hand there at Buffalo Wild Wings, just know it's a fucking pit bull. Right. And they were like, what's that supposed to mean? And I was like, well, I'll probably tear your face off. Unpredictable. Yeah. And they were like, oh, well, that's breed shaming. That's the first time I've ever heard that. Yeah. Breed shaming? Mm -hmm. No. It's a, it's, a, it's a goddamn pit bull. If I see an alligator or a crocodile, chances are I won't know the difference. I won't know the difference of a, a, an alligator or a crocodile if I see one in the pond. If, if I said, hey, don't stick your hand in there, that alligator is going to chomp your what hand off. The and difference? they go, here's the thing. And they go, it's a crocodile. 
don't breed shame your reptiles. Mm-hmm. I would tell them to fuck straight off. Same as I did this other person. And what is the difference? I don't know. Between a croc and an alligator and a gator. Who knows, man? Saltwater and freshwater is what uh, Jamie, our producer, just said. Great. Either okay. way, either way, well, they're easy. goddamn train killers who mm-hmm. will tear the arms and legs off of you or anyone else who decides to wade in uh, the waters and not know what's what. Sure. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, but with, with homie, my buddy, who takes his, his pit bull everywhere. Right, right. right. Um, I say to him every single time he does it, every single time, hey, man, do you realize how awkward it is for us yeah. and everyone else that's around you? His answer, his response is always the same. Everybody loves the dog. No, I'm legally about. No, it's it's more annoying than that. I'm legally I'm legally allowed to have him in here. Yeah. Yeah, I know, dude. Like you're legally allowed to have a kid in a bar that serves food, right? Yeah. Legally. Yeah. Do we do it? No, no. Do you know what I mean? Legally, I could take my kid out to the smoking section of a bar. Right. Satellite, let's say. Yeah. Sit him right next to the table and be like, guys. Puff right in his face all day long. And they won't do it. They'll feel uncomfortable and yeah. be like, oh, okay, I could do that legally. Legally, I'm allowed to be in here. Yes. And what if I just said that every time and I just walked through with my kid? Legally, I'm allowed to be here. Yeah. Right? That's what it feels like with him when he says it. Yeah. Because it's his only response. It's not like, yeah, no, man. It's just like, I don't, I don't like leaving him by himself. Like He doesn't have a, a rational response to it it's very um and i think that's a lot of like the horse thing the peacock thing i'm legally allowed to yeah therefore i will yes and this is me like standing up for something for my rights it's very childish uh the problem is this yes you were legally allowed to do all of the stuff that we just described however it does not make you any less of a shitty person to other people and their personal spaces and where they're at and why right right um i say this with the 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 fucking horse Whoever had to sit next to that person or the row behind it or whatever, who, who's got to smell that goddamn thing. Um, sorry. Uh, the dog. Same way with my buddy and his fucking dog. And, I, and I, by the way, I've yeah. told him this. So this isn't oh, we, like, we oh, it, I'm speaking outside of school behind his back. We say it no. constantly. Constantly. To the point where we may see him recently and I'm just in soon. Yeah, and yeah. we're going to have to say, hey, man, we're not doing this anymore. No. No. So I said to him, hey, man. Not everyone loves your dog. Um, so don't, you can't assume that. And he's like, well, what, what makes you say that? And I was like, we have kids. And I know no matter how great and gorgeous and sweet I think my children are, I realize that when we go out, there are other people who do not like kids, will do not, not think my children there. are sweet, um, will not understand what they're going through that day. Therefore, just out of being a polite human being, I try not to fuck up their day with this right um so with the dog and everything else the the horse all of it just be aware of your surroundings and where you are and who other people are and what they're going through and they're not going to love the same shit you are and i'm sure there was a handful of people on that plane who were just like man it's a real cute goddamn pony and i'd love to just pet it i'd love to ride it in an appropriate uh, area yeah like a quinceanera sure Great place for that pony. <laughs> Not in business class right. on an American Airlines flight from O'Hare to Omaha. Here's how much I care about what other people are thinking, feeling, doing around me. Uh, we went in first class one time with the kids. I've only been a total with of... With the kids, right? Yeah, I've been a total of two times in my life. But um, with the kids, and I was like so against it for that reason. And you were like, let's just do uh, it. It's less money. Or it was like the same amount or well, something. And it, I was like, okay, fine. Here's and what, the whole yeah. time I was like, my God, these people are like paid for first class. And they like, you know, they want to relax up here. And I'm up here with my fucking kids. So here's what I did. Um, and this is, this is the reason why for this is on that particular flight, we were out of town for fuck, like six weeks. We had endless oh, yeah. bags. So with our bag fees, they no, were I, trying to charge us like I four hundred dollars in bag fees. So I was like, "Hey, man, it's the same." So in first class, it was the same. All free bags, right? We no, no, you get free bags. No, I and know. It was like great. So, so we're, we're going to get that to switch it because there is flights where 
uh, on this last, where was I going? Orlando. Somebody came up to me and was just like, hey, dude, I know you, man. Like, you're super fucking famous. Why are you sitting in coach? And I was like, I can't justify a first class ticket from here to fucking Orlando, right? Someone came up to you and said you were super fucking famous? Yes. Uh, and that's what I said. I'm not really that famous, right. but I appreciate you saying that. And it was rad. Right. And I, I think it was Alec who was sitting with us or, mm. or somebody else. They were like, man, do you get that a lot? Like, I was like, not very often, but um, there was another time where I took a picture on a plane and they were like, Jesus Christ, man, with all the fucking movies and shit you've done, you're still not in first class. And I was like, I still can't justify it on like an hour long flight where you're just like, you're just being an asshole at that point. Right. Uh Um, so with the kids thing, right. It was the same goddamn price. We had to get the bags on and I did make sure to get it in the front row where there was no one ahead of them. They couldn't kick anybody's chairs. Mm -hmm. And I was across from you in the front front row. So there was nowhere to go for the children to go, but I was still like polite about it. And at least like looked at the seating and said, Hey man, how do I make people less uncomfortable in case my kids were out of control? Luckily they were pretty good on the flight. Nobody said anything and, and it was rad, but it was purely a financial decision of like, I'm not checking 90 bags paying for them when I can just do it in first class and do the fucking thing. Right? So that was the justification for it. But even then, again, polite, sat in the front row, right. weren't kicking chairs, weren't opening up, weren't mashing computer buttons in the back of the headrest, like nothing at all, and, uh, and then end up being okay. But yes, same, same similar thing, you know? I feel, yeah. Yeah. So at least I tried, and hey, we're going to do this. I don't know, unless you're, because if your horse was in a, fucking show contest or whatever it was, right? Jumping things or equestrian or whatever that is. Mm-hmm. Typically, that would come with like a horse trailer and you drive it around, right? Yeah, yeah. You don't put it on a commercial flight. Yeah, well, it had a vest on it uh, that was, it was a therapy horse. Yeah. Yeah, so it didn't, it wasn't going to be in a, a show. No, right. it was not going to be in a show that we know of. Mm. So I don't know where that horse went after that. I don't know what the rest of the horse's day was like, but... Uh, and now the lady, was it the lady that was like holding it on yeah. the end? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm-hmm. we're not going to get into her. Because uh, look, no, trust me, won't. if you want to see the reactions of her as a person, go to my Instagram. There's like 5,000 comments on it. That, I mean, the show exploded, the fucking post exploded, all that stuff. And um, if you want to see the reactions to her, go ahead. I don't... I try not to answer when you start picking apart people's personal appearances and all that shit. Uh, no, I let it no, go. no. But there was a there was a vibe. There was a talk to your manager vibe. There was a. I'm sure if you asked her, it was. I'm legally allowed. Yeah. yeah. I'm legally allowed to. Yeah. Now that's what I'm saying. If I'm at a bar, right, uh, like a satellite, or please s- bring the horse. Then it's hilarious. Then it's fucking hilarious. Bring the if horse If you brought inside. the horse from your house oh. to a bar. A, let's bring a full size one. Everyone's 21 plus. Like, great. Then it's hilarious. Oh. Then it's a, it, it is the talk of the bar and it's a party thing. I think You can that, take yeah. selfies with it. Totally Wayne, fine. You walk from your house no. with the horse and you did the whole thing. Right? Oh. Traveling on a plane is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Um, and not funny. Yeah. And the only thing that's going to happen now is like, dude, I can see, I can see this in, in inside my soul. Jared, my co-host on drinking bros podcast. I, I bet you, he tries to bring like a Clydesdale on a plane just to do it or something like what some other animal. weird animal. Yeah. I probably, yes. Yeah. He will. There was only one comment where somebody raged against me on this, on my, my thing. And, and they were like, what if she does really need that support from that horse? I can't even get into that. What's your answer? I didn't even have an answer for it. There is, there is. Other, uh, other no than answer. it took every fiber of my being not to tell her to fuck off. Um, what's the answer to maybe she really didn't need that horse for emotional therapy? I hope she didn't. I, I hope she was just trying to transport the fucking horse and that was the only way. If she really <laughs> needed it for therapy, then we're in a whole other situation that I can't even get into. I hope that she was doing like we used to do with our dog. 
get him in the hotel, put on the fucking vest, right? Yeah. I'm hoping that's what it was. Yeah. She's trying to get it to somebody. It's a gift for a niece or something right. in my mind. Yes. That's the only way that I'm like, yeah, girl, you did it. You got, you fake, you yeah. tricked everyone. You got the horse on there. And that would be rad. That would be rad. Now, when we get into really needing it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. I mean, what do you, what mm, do we... The only place I'll go with that, if there's a, like, a autistic, there's some kind of something like that going on. But why some the Some development, in, I don't know, you know. You know? I know there is equine therapy, right? <laughs> is that real? Yes. Yes, but it's more like... Um, that sounds like a Gwyneth Paltrow thing. No, no. Our, our friend does it. Equine it's actually like... therapy. Yeah. Our friend does it. Which one? Uh, Andrea. Oh, okay. So it's like, it's, you know, the yes, horses her- like feel, they, they're very intuitive, right? And they 100%. kind of feel how you're feeling yep. and you, there's that kind of therapy for certain but disabilities. That is, mental, but, but here's the thing, yes. that, that is a child with disabilities and. Absolutely. Or, or adults or whatever. This isn't a grown woman who's walking and rolling into Walmart. You know what I'm saying? Right. She was not right. wearing, so, she didn't have braces on her legs or anything like, you know. Right. Like our friend, like our. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, I'm saying does, like for you know? some like autistic and mental. Yeah, a hundred percent. There is that kind of therapy only because it is an interesting animal in that way that it's very intuitive and reads kind of feelings and energies. Yeah. Right. Uh, but having said all that, you know. Yeah. That lady. So I don't know. I, I wanted to address it because everybody had wrote in and like we got flooded with like a hundred pictures of this horse and then various shots of it, like all over the airport and things like that. Like I'd only saw those two and I was surprised that this story hadn't blown up. Like we had just chatted about it and then I posted it on Instagram and like it, it, it hadn't blown up. And then I, so used. it was like 48 hours later and everybody was like, Hey man, what the fuck is this? Um, yeah. I don't say we did it, but eh. I think people are so used to that shit now. Right. Where it's like, uh, lizard, I'm, someone brought I a rat, not. someone brought a thing. We're just like, Oh, okay. What's the next? That is the biggest. Wait, what was the other one? The huge rabbit? No, that one died. Yeah. That one died um, on the plane. In the plane because he didn't have it with him. Jack Mandeville was on that show. What was the name of that rabbit? It was a. It had a name to it. And we did a whole. We did a whole show on it. I know, it was so good. God, when you when you start to get into the four hundreds or whatever we are on, like, it's hard I, to, yeah, I have no idea what it was. It was in the early the early uh, first hundred for sure. Oh yeah 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 yeah. And it was yeah. a gigantic rabbit, like the biggest rabbit in the world. Yeah yeah. Died on that flight. R.I.P. You mm. know. But, uh, Still investigating. <laughs> um, <laughs> they don't know. They don't know what happened. They have no idea. Um, yeah, man, I don't know. I, it, fuck, there's, there, who knows? Maybe there's people who think I'm a fucking asshole out there for saying all this shit. Simon was the, the rabbit's right. name. There Simon, it is. Simon, the, the R. I. rabbit. R.I.P. Simon, yeah. Huge rabbit. Yeah. Tits out for Simon. I think we did a whole thing on that. <laughs> Didn't we? We did something for it, and I forget what it was. Any excuse. Mm-hmm. Any excuse for a dicks out, tits out. Yep, we do it. We do it. And maybe we are being assholes. You know, I don't, I'm not really sure. Uh, this instance does not affect me personally, so I guess there's no reason for me to get super heated about it. I think the only way I would really, really give a shit about it is if I was on the plane. Yeah. With uh, the horse. And I know that if I was sitting with my baby right now, he would be fucking terrified. So if I was sitting yeah, next yeah, to yeah, them yeah. and I had a uh, Jagger, I would, he would be terrified. Yeah. Well, a one-year-old next to a, a horse would be a little so much. So there's that. There's like humans that should be able to ride before. But, you know. Yeah. I don't um, know. But don't By the know. way, speaking of the asshole thing, do you ever have like a friend or someone you know and you feel like no matter what you say, you're just always an asshole because they do that thing. Do the thing where they make you feel that way? Or? No, but they, 
the the shitty things you talk about that you dislike in life they they love them and it's just like oh, oh no yeah, yeah, god yeah, damn yeah, it yeah. and i feel like i'm always saying the wrong thing over and over and over again where it's just like oh i didn't know you like this or this or you're this you're saying or this you have a friend this. like that I, yes and i every time i just feel like an asshole and i don't I, I try to back my like backtrack out of it every single conversation. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh no, I just said this, and damn it, I like the la- for for example, for example, the last one was this. Like, no matter what I say, I feel like it was a Seinfeld episode where mm-hmm. no matter what I say, it's just this person will pop around the corner and they'll be like, well, what were you talking about? <laughs> um, and I, I had said out loud, I was like, it was we were at a barbecue. Okay. And I, I just openly said out loud, I was like, man, you ever, you ever meet like a 30, like above, like a 32 year old man above 32 that just still drinks cans of regular Coca-Cola, like on a regular basis, mm-hmm. you know, that can just do that mm-hmm. and not have to worry about life and, you know, right. everything else. Cause I haven't had sodas in years probably. I, and I never see it anymore. I don't know if you do. Um, yeah, I mean. Because we, I, and we, cause we go to a lot of games and stuff. Mm-hmm. They almost don't really sell them either like they used to. Remember? It was like, oh, get a Coca-Cola. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's they, like water. Yeah, Gatorade. water or lemonade yeah. or you know, something Gatorade, something different now than just old-fashioned Coca-Colas, mm-hmm. right? I think the last time I had a real Coca-Cola was mixed with something. Yeah. Like a rum or a mm-hmm. And that has been, oh my something. gosh, I haven't had a rum and Coke. In and forever forever because usually you'll get something else right yes yeah. everybody in their 30s plus is watching their weight or figure or whatever sure enough somebody rolls around the corner of just drinking a full can of old school coca-cola and i'm just like oh my god dude i'm such a dick um well you aren't i was just trying to have a normal great conversation reading the room and it's not that but the there was two Cokes on the table. I know. But for I thought they were children's. I thought they were child's Cokes. And I. By the way, your children should not be drinking Coke. Right? That Neither should a 32 say, year old man. That, Whatever. That's, that's what we can say straight out. So, therefore, because we usually, like, we, we throw a lot of parties, we go to a lot of parties. It's always juice boxes or some form of juice mm-hmm. or apple juice or whatever. And whoever like, can get the most natural, most organic is y- like the yeah. best mom. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. If you get the honest shit from Jessica Alba. Yeah. Um, you know, fucking cage-free diapers or whatever she's mm-hmm. selling. Mm-hmm. Um, cage-free diapers. Whatever, man. Like all natural, pure shit. Uh, you're the champion. You're the hero of the household and the party or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, I... And again, I was like, oh, uh, well, that must be nice that you can do it because I, I definitely can't right. do, do that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, fuck. Am I telling them they're overweight? Is that it? Like, am I insinuating something that they're overweight or I'm on? you... Here's the issue with things that you do, and I've seen this before. Great. Is that things that you're supposed to talk about between like one or two people as far as like there's two people there you could be like fucking coke right it's like who who does that you do these hush hush side conversations or like talking about your kids like oh this fucking dangling right you'll do those conversations as like the address the room and there's a lot of different personalities in one big room so those i think you're better and you kill, by the way, if you're at a table with like two other, you know what I mean? Like cool parents and you're a kind of off to the side of the party and you guys are all like, this is where you really shine. Our friend like Kim loves it and people will love to like sidle up to you because the comments that you make about like the dumb kids or the fucking Coke or the whatever, you know what I mean? Like right. Coca-Cola, by the way, not Coke. At the it, was, party. it was, there was three people at this table, you know, and you said someone come around the corner, you know, you those are things that I actually like you're noticing that you can maybe grow from this. Yes. And you could do those funny because, again, very funny. And so there's I wasn't a lot even of jokes saying too. it, though, to be funny. I was saying I know it you a, weren't, but it's like. I had not seen a can of Coke because it, it was one of those specialized cans, you know, like right. the, the little medium ones where you're mm-hmm. just like, oh, fuck, that could be from the 1950s. Mm-hmm. Um, who is drinking a 1950s can of Coca-Cola, like a right. like a baby again. Right. I used to have that when I was five years old, and 
<laughs> I mean, I'm from Atlanta. The the Coke factory is everything sure. there. Um, sure. Coca Cola everywhere. Matter of fact, you call every every beverage Coke. I'll take a Coke, even if you want a Sprite. I'll take a Coke, and the waitress would ask you what kind. I'll, uh-uh. go, I'll have a Sprite. Dead serious. That's oh how we grew up. Lord. That's what it was. But Atlanta is the hub of Coca Cola. Right. I grew up where we weren't even allowed to have Coke. Because you were in Ohio, right? We weren't right? allowed to have soda at all. I would go to my friend's house at, a, at an embarrassingly old age uh-huh. for a kid, right? 27. To be calling, yeah, 24, 25, calling <laughs> my mom to see if I could have a piece of candy at this our friend's house. Oof, you were that girl? Yeah, you because were, I wasn't uh... allowed. But it's better than this girl. Tell, tell me this. So there are some people that limit like their kids can't have anything right no sugar no nothing and then they get to a friend's house and they're little literally in the friend's like pantry just horking down everything like can i have another one i didn't get one it's like yes you did and you're lying but you're so like you're like an animal that's been left out of the cage yeah so thankfully i wasn't like that because that kid is very annoying where like as soon as they walk in they're like do you have any snack do you have any do you do you have anything do you have any donuts do you have anything you're like Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Um, but I was, yeah. I would call and be like, they're having candy over here. Can I have one? Oh, man. I knew those kids. And I was, we'd always be like, uh, the other kids would get behind their back and be like, you believe that? Dummies yeah. got to call their mom to ask for candy. Just eat the candy. She's not going to know. Did you have a guilty conscience about it? Was that what it was? No, like I you'd think go at, home that and tell your point, mom? at that point, I wasn't that old. I was like, you know, maybe a little bit older than Jax. Yeah. To where he still asks too. I always say yes, but he still comes in and says, hey, can I have this? Sure. I don't think that he would do it at another kid's house, maybe. Or the parents would just be like, it's fine, just do it. Like even if he wanted to call. Okay. But I think it was just so ingrained that I was like, I just never, we never had that. Oh stuff. man, we had a word for that. What was it? Uh, dork. Loser. Yeah, loser, dork patrol. But anyways... <sighs> Back to you growing as a person, and I really like that you noticed that and you're starting to notice that in barbecues, it's like there's things that you and I will talk about hilarious to us, but if you announce that to the party, it comes off as like, you know? Yeah, 100%. And it's like not everyone everyone is on the same page. There are a couple. Find them in the corner and make them laugh because they will. And and the reason why I'm sharing this story at all is because I am becoming more cognizant of it. And with our child now going into kindergarten, we're meeting a lot of new parents that you don't, you know, when you're in preschool and all that stuff, you kind of just hang out with the same crew or whatever. And then yeah, and you can choose, you know, yeah, you can pick and choose who's cool. Yeah. Um, well, bloods or crips, choose sure. one. And it's like, rad. I don't have to see that person ever again. Um, now you're opening up to a whole new world where it's just like, all right, there's going to be other children and different parties and yeah, neighborhoods yeah, yeah. and all that other stuff where you're just like, yeah, shit. I don't know these people. Um, but I will say this. I do. What I do get though now a lot is, People who listen to one show or the other, Drinking Bros or Ross Patterson Revolution, and they come up and whisper things to me about Trump all the time. That happens. We did find that happening at the last all party that the we went time. to. Yeah. I, but me out as a person, like doing all these live shows and everything, I get it all the time. And people will just pull me aside and they'll be like, hey, man, I fucking, I love Trump too. And I'm fucking, and, and I'm just like, oh, shit. All right. So, yeah, uh, there's time and place for, for all of it. I'm learning and I'm growing as a human. <laughs> and But again, your commentary, like if you could just have like an announcer's booth and people could come into the booth with you. At, and a, at look a party? At, yeah, at like f- a kid's party or, a, you know, any kind of other dorky party, you, that would be the hot ticket if i could announce the the party and just be (laughs) like hey man no consequences no coke we got a full flavored coke yeah full can of coke out there And no that is not a child that is a grown man that has chosen yeah the literal cup of sugar but then part of me looks looks at it like maybe i'm doing life wrong and he's got it all figured out and i'm the dummy who is is worried about fucking weight or whatever it is, you know? Mm, yeah. Um, cause I have another friend too. It's all genes, dude. That's what I've realized uh, now. I, I get another friend too. I, and this one, no one will ever guess. No one knows. Uh, and which is why I can tell the story. 
he is like a child where he drinks a, a bottle of Coca-Cola. Like a liter or this nope, one? Nope, the glass one. You know, the little tiny glass ones. I know who it is. Um, he drinks it one every day. Finally, I was like, hey, man, like after like the fourth or fifth time, I was like, hey, man, I always see you drink one. And it's got to be out of a bottle, an old school Coke bottle. I go, I see you drink those one every single day, man. And I was like, what's the fucking deal? And he goes, man, I got to have it. I just have, that's my one sheet for the day. I've got to have that one thing or whatever. And I was like, you were above 35 years old. How do you maintain, is he's relatively shredded? Um, and he just looked at me without blinking and he was like, oh, it's shit. And I was like, fuck, all right, okay. Thanks yep. for, I appreciate your honesty. And I was like, look, if I was on HGH too, I'd probably be drinking Cokes all day. So good for if you. If you could, at this point though, if you could, would you? To me, it must, it, you know, now I'm like. There, there, no, there's certain things I miss. So um, I miss, because this, that's where the, the rest of this conversation w- w- went to. After that, because I'm trying to dig myself out of this hole. So then I start talking about like my favorite sodas growing up and why mm-hmm. I stopped. And like, I mean, I'm in it right now and I'm just literally just grave digging this fucking God. hole. And I was like, man, as a child, I would sit there and just drink grape Fanta, a whole two liter myself. And it was amazing. Uh, one was sitting out somewhere we went. I forget what function it was. Um, I think it might've been a, a live show or whatever. Right. And I was like, ah, oh, shit. Is that grape Fanta? Like, man, I haven't had that since I was like eight. Um, I had a nice swig of grape fan and I was like, God damn it. I could drink this whole two liter right now. Really? Yeah. Uh, the other one that got me too was uh, Mountain Dew Baja Blast. I can rip through Mountain Dew's Baja Blast, the code reds, all of it, man. I am here for all of it. Uh, I could still do all of that. Uh, what I have grown out of though is like ice cream, bowls of ice cream. Right. I, I can't go back and just sit down and eat a bowl of ice cream. Um, can't do it. Um, so there is certain sweets and things like that that I'm like, oh man, I can't go back and do that. Yeah. But a soda, a good old fashioned soda pop, especially a Baja Blast at Taco Bell. You give me a number four with a nachos Bel Grande Supreme, no beans, mm-hmm. um, and a, and a and a large Baja Blast with it. Happiest dude in the world. And uh, I, yes, I miss that. I do. I also mix. I, I also miss uh, mixers and normal fucking drinks, dude. Just a screwdriver, you know. Throw some OJ in there. Right. Throw a little Simpson in that drink. Sure. Let me let me just enjoy a fucking drink. Give me a, give me an old fashioned whiskey sour, you know. Oh yeah. Throw me down a whiskey sour. I'm down for that. Mm-hmm. Um, give me some of those uh, sugary shots. Fine. Kamikaze, you know. And you're like. Drink you know, truly I, like yeah. White Claw. I don't need to drink your bullshit fucking George Clooney tequila. You can just throw me a kamikaze, bro. I'll kamikaze it with you. Oh. Yeah. So certain things I miss. Whatever. Right. Right. Uh, we got some sponsors who pay for this whole shit wagon to be on the air, though. Jabes. Mm. And um, again, I just go off on these tangents. This is what a podcast is, though, right? It really is. Uh, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros is where you need to uh, uh, get your mattresses, get your sleep on. I lay a ding dong on. Uh, I get your sleep on. I, I get, get your sleep on. I lay a ding dong on it. I lay a ding dong on it. Uh, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. It's got you covered if you're a military or first responder. You get an extra 15% off. It's a big, big savings. If you're a regular civilian like myself, they're still giving away free pillows with the Ghost Lux mattresses. Um, and it's amazing. Uh, fuck, man. Then they got them for all sizes. As always, at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. 36 months. Pay as you go program. No interest. No one's doing that, Jabes. No one. Not one single person, Jabes. Really? Yep. So... Everybody can get beefed. Uh, huge savings over there. So uh, get it. Get the adjustable base if you can. I've got the Cal King, and I don't think they make it for that. So I'm kind of snowed. For the adjustable base? Yeah. Oh, it's okay. only King. Mm. Uh, maybe we should switch to a King after. You know, it's my Abraham Lincoln body. I'm just so tall. I'm just so presidential. 
Uh, then I need the other one. Sorry. You don't. Mm-mm. I could hike you up in a little twin. Get yourself a. Oh my gosh. Because they have it. Twin would be so. The spacious. bundle package is for a twin and it's a seven ninety nine, and it's. <laughs> for adjustable? Yeah. With the mattress. So you can just fucking. And the pillows. Whole thing is a package and then you can just press the remote. It's got USB ports. So for all your shit that you plug in per night. Um, boom, you'd be right oh, there. Oh, it's come for me day, huh? No, no, no. It's not come for you today, but you plug in a lot of stuff. You got Netflix on, some form of headphones in. That's um, one thing. No, but it's on a phone. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then the phone runs out of battery, so that's got a, a charger that goes into that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a whole... So just one thing. It's a whole smorgasbord where the things... Now there's like a there's metal like another thing. thing that clips on or, you know... Um, and then the 63 remotes we have in our bed, like, I think you can just hook up the remote to the, the goddamn base, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so when you climb into bed and the remotes, are I, all, all I, I hear them hit the floor <laughs> like a sack of nickels, uh, at a casino <laughs> on a Saturday afternoon. And, uh, yeah, never see him, never see him coming. Um, you'll never see the strike force energy. Coming from StrikeForceEnergy.com. That's up next. Orange. Boom, 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 boom. Shabloinkers. Sorry for cutting you off. Yeah. Chase. Sorry about that. Uh, I apologize. Or is it too late? What? Is it too late? Too late. Too late. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Strike Force is a tasty, tiny little tin pouch. Rip it open and squeeze it into any liquid available. It's in this, man. I've got it jacked into this Kirkland right now. Um, I had to do taxes last night or the last three nights. And I was up till like fucking two in the morning doing that bullshit. Um, then dropping off the, the, the child at 7 a.m. Uh, I've been Kirkland it up, son, with a little strike force, son. I wish Kirkland was a sponsor. How rad would that be? There's paper plates, napkins all over the place. <laughs> paper towels. I could just spill all over me throughout Hoodies. the show. They have good hoodies, too. Dude, really? Oh, yeah. You got a Kirkland, Kirkland hoodie? Kirkland hoodie, yeah. Come on. Yeah. They got a Kirkland hoodie. Yeah, dude. They have all kinds well, of clothes. Looks like uh, Christmas time will be uh, <laughs> full of hoodies for you, James. I'll get it from Kirkland. I'll probably get nine for ten bucks. Uh, Strike Force Energy is available online or at 7-Elevens in like 1,200 locations. So they're everywhere. Um but I would order it online. Use a subscription a month. We do. Strikeforceenergy.com. Promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. And that is forever. Uh, last but not least, this is what you came for. Straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Oh, you right. There it is. Jeez. Oh. Yeah, that one even got you. Oh, it really just takes it out of me. It was in the back of your throat, I feel takes like. It. It's, like a, it's like 11. Yeah. When she, you know, has to... Nosebleed. Yep. yep. It really, it's draining. It would be hilarious if you got a nosebleed <laughs> every time it. you said it. Yeah, and I was just like, oh, man, James, don't, don't do it. No, I don't have do to it, for the people. Yeah. yeah. No. Uh. And then I just like crinkle your head in my yeah yeah subscribe to the video show on youtube if you want to see uh blood come out of james's nose next read um <laughs> i'm gross. just saying i'll definitely tune in yeah sick. why not sick yeah. gross <laughs> sick and gross <laughs> sick and gross, gross and bad no good uh straight razors is uh it's for dudes who just worry about being dudes you know True. cologne Mustache waxes, beard oils, conditioners, all of that jazz. And uh, straight razors. It's got, a, it's got a, a nice little kit that comes with it. And you can get it engraved. Hmm. So that's a new thing. It's a hmm. fun thing. Hmm. Uh, go to straightrazors.com, promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off there. Their smolder aftershave is still my favorite in the world. Um, before we do these shows, we, we do research, try to read up on the news, see what's going on. We try to give you the hot we do. new breaking stories. Yeah, the horse was us, dude. We broke that story. We broke that horse. Um, that wild horse would never run free on an American Airlines flight. I'm going to hit you with the hardest story that's on CNN right now that just popped up. Because um, it was way at the bottom of the page. And I was like, man, is this real? 
You ever look at websites and you see some weird fucking toenail or, uh, you know, at the bottom of the page or, uh, you know, some sock disease down there and you're like, man, is that part oh, of the story? Yeah, yeah, or are you trying yeah, to get yeah. me to click on an ad for oh, something else, you uh-huh. know, where it's just like breast implant, titty explodes and you're like, wait, is that real clickbait, or yeah. clickbait? And you go to some other dark website where you're immersed in some underground channel worth of shit Mm -hmm. uh this one i was like this has got to be clickbait this can't be a cnn story but it was uh it was a a child who eating a diet of french fries pringles and white bread uh, was enough to make this teenage boy lose his eyesight so he went blind from eating only a diet of french fries pringles and white bread a scientist um, from the University of Bristol examined the case of a young patient whose extremely picky eating led to blindness and have warned of others of the dangers of a poor diet. Um, Jamie, that, that sounds like the food that you eat. You're, You're really close to going blind at this <laughs> point. I don't have to see you. <laughs> <laughs> he, just, he just screamed out, I don't have to see you. That's true. You could rate Charles this whole you fucking are, sitch, dude. You are a health food denier. Hey. Uh, look, I haven't heard of this, but uh, he, the kid told the doctors he'd only eaten fries from like a fish and chip shop. Mm-hmm. Those are usually heavy. Like when you get fish and chips as a big fry, mm-hmm. that's a weighty fry. Where is he? In, in, uh, a lot, of, a lot of weight to this. Um, Who has fish and chip shops? Uh, right? It's got to be England. Yeah. Um, and those are... Oh, very greasy. Uh, so very good. He ate Pringles potato chips, mm-hmm. white bread, mm-hmm. and then slices. Oh, this is a new one. Slices of processed ham and sausage since elementary school. And he avoided certain foods with certain textures. James, you've done that before. Which? Um, you don't like textures. Textured, f- like, yeah, there's weird textured foods that you won't eat. Sushi. And then, if, again, if there's a chicken wing that's just barely cooked that will ugh. man um i don't know i don't know about that that's a this is a crazy one man there's no way that they can actually link that to it they said they did man and how um so they just said in extreme of- examples of this and they ended up studying this kid cuz he apparently lost also part of his hearing at one point as, as well i don't mean to laugh at that i'm just reading that 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 part of it for the first time but um man and how old is he uh 17 years old mm. 17 year- oh it is the college of london so. yeah Whew. Mm. man the chip shop yeah yeah <laughs> you know, I don't know. um <laughs> do you like that knowledge Ah, the old chip shop. Oh, they call it a chip shop. You must be talking they call about it a chip the old shop. Yeah, chip shop. fish and chip shop. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, what do I say about that? You say shit like this all the time, like that you can't keep eating things like this or whatever. But look, but we are on two. We are on completely different sides of the fence on this. Like you are a health food denier. You think that it has nothing to do with anything. You can eat whatever you want. No, 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 no. Not at all. I, I, look, I think the health food is probably just as processed as everything else. It's like if you roll into whole, to whole Foods, there's certain things like, I don't know, extracts like ginger or vitamin C that's pure where you're like, mm-hmm. oh, cool. I'm drinking that. Um, I enjoy drinking kombucha, mm-hmm. right? I think that product has probably become so commercialized, probably worthless. Which one? Kombucha. The kombucha? It's probably a mental thing at this point. For me. Uh, I don't know. Does it help with your digestion? Not really. Okay. Then yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it probably is. No, it doesn't. It doesn't yeah, I don't, I don't think it's from the is same like to? type of, yeah, and I don't think it's from the same type of, you know, fermented mushroom. There's no way that they can ferment it long enough and have that much product. Right? Yeah. So, you know. I've had real fermented you've had real booch and it is not good i loved if it you can drink you it, did not lo- like mm-hmm, it i loved it remember mm-hmm, that guy brought it in who, mm-hmm, who worked for us mm-hmm. uh i could tell it, it was, was a crew member yep on helen keller mm-hmm. versus night wolves here's my thinking of it and i you're absolutely right that if you get like chips or you know normal stuff that comes in a package at whole foods it's no different but i do believe that if you like 
make your own like dough, for example, your own bread, your mm-hmm. own like you buy the vegetables, cut them off yourself, like you know everything that's going into your food. I think it's a lot better than buying it, you know, either from the from the freezer section and warming it up. The the preservatives alone that make it so it doesn't go bad forever right. is bad enough, right? Yeah. So that's my only thing is that if you're not eating anything that you actually know where it all comes from, you know every ingredient, everything you put in the food you have done, you don't do that every once in a while, you're going to go blind. Yeah. Or deaf. Or deaf. <laughs> or both. If you're eating a process, that process too, which is he's eating the worst things that you can eat, right? <sighs> Pringles, read that fucking ingredient Dude, list. perfect, man. Um, White bread. Read that and go, you know, it's like racist, the, the worst racist white bread, the worst of the worst. Yeah. Uh, a little racist that you said, just, you know, the white bread like that. Wasn't expecting mm-hmm. that, but, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, man. I, I mean, I like my food to not have to travel as far as, as well. Like I like it to be from a farm in North Carolina, as opposed to like driving Africa, all the way yeah. from Mexico, which yeah. is where a lot of produce and everything comes from. And you're like, damn it. How, what do they have to do to keep it? Fresh. Fresh. Yeah. Like that far. Animal meats. Um, now you're just saying words. No, but oh. animal meats, like, you know, from Mexico, good luck. Sure. You know, how yeah. many of those are just dead cats at that point? Right? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, f- I, f- I feel like a lot of it is, is probably just cat meat disguised as. It's so weird. Like, I feel like we're having a real conversation and then we don't. We aren't. No, but we are. But. You still like that still sits in the back of my mind too, where it's just like, dude, it's coming from Mexico. Good right. Luck. There was a bunch of boxers uh, who got tested positive for steroids and they were saying that they were, he was eating cattle. Um, it was a famous guy. It was fucking Alvarez um, champion. Mm-hmm. And he was just like, yeah, man, the reason why I test positive for steroids is because I've been eating this beef down there and they inject it full of shit, you know, to make them grow faster or whatever. I don't know if that's true or not, but they do that here. What I do know is that is classic Mexico, right? Classic Mexico. That is a prime example of Mexico all over our faces. So uh, that is one place um, where I don't trust it from. Sure. Um, but I'll trust the meats from anywhere else. Like if you want to ship me in some beef from uh, Nebraska, good to go. Um, totally fine with that. Okay. Uh, maybe I like Florida. I wouldn't trust it from there. Some produce, but not any meat down there. I mean, people are all methed up, probably injecting cows just to do it. Why would you do that? Testing out needles, making sure they're clean, making sure there's no fentanyl in there. You know, a bunch of drug users running around, probably. Cause here's the thing. Take a little bit, inject it into a cow if that fucker falls over on the, on the ground. That's actually smart. Congratulations. Probably a bad batch of shit, mm-hmm. right? But. That is smart. Uh, you know, you give me some, uh, you give me some meat from, uh, Texas. I feel mm. good about it. You give me some, uh, Nebraska meat. I feel real good anywhere in the Midwest. I feel good about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's certain places where it's a no go for me. Uh, all, all the way around all the way there. I have my list of States that I try to stay away from Arkansas. Another one methed up state mm-hmm. where God knows what's going on there. Either that cow has been fucked or shot up and, uh, you know, it's anyone's guess which is which. It's a 50-50 coin toss, wouldn't you say? Right. Um, next up, I want to talk about Justin Bieber, Jabes. Yeah. Biebskis. Oh, what up? Um, he just posted like this crazy, like, I don't know. It was like a fucking 10-page long Instagram post. Oh, about opening how, up. Yeah. yeah, how he almost died and shit. Mm. Um, which how did he almost die? Drugs, women. All of the things that you thought Justin Bieber would have died from um, probably fucking happened. How do you die from women? Too much sex. You know? And then what happens? You think you can get AIDS, drugs, and uh, sex, uh, and uh, all uh, of it, uh, you know? Uh, uh, um. Probably unprotected sex because that's the best. Yeah, but the, the, you know, the, the echelon of, of women that he's with. Oh, they're top notch. You're probably good. On That's the, what I say. You're probably good on the. 80s. So he wrote about that, but mm-hmm. obviously he found Jesus. Right. So like, 
you know, and I think he's going to the new. You're going to find that this is the new Scientology. Uh, Chris Pratt goes there. Um, oh, is that the thing, huh? Yeah, it's like this new. Check and see if we have a friend here. Um, it's yeah. like this new. What's the um, church called? Do you know the name of it? I know exactly what you're talking about, mm-hmm. and they've been coming for. Uh, they've been coming for people, and in this church, Hillsong, right? Yeah, Hillsong or whatever it is, and uh, Pratt, Pratt, Pratt. Right. He had to come out and say, hey, man, um, this is a fine place of, of worship or whatever. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if it is or isn't. What type of church? Okay. is uh, Yeah. So Hillsong was formerly affiliated with Australian Christian churches. Okay. The Assemblies of God in, in Australia. It's Pentecostal. Look, if I'm going to trust Anyways, it, I just think the, the amount of celebrities. Is Pentecostal the one with snakes? Yeah. yeah. No, I don't know. I'd like we a actually nice... have someone that knows. Maybe. But <laughs> maybe we have, a, we have a friend who just stopped by the studio. She, she just walked into yes. a, a world of pain. So she said, "Pentecostal yes. is the one with snakes." It is. <laughs> Pretty sure it is. No, God I thought. Damn that it! Was I like, knew it. I thought that was like it's the Rattlers. seventh day. Isn't that the seventh day? Adventist? Seventh day Adventist. Yes. My God, with man! With the snakes. But anyways, I'm just saying the amount of celebrities that are flocking to and getting work because they go to this certain church, it's the new Scientology where if you go, Mm -hmm. you will get certain roles, which is how, you know, celebrities even started with Scientology. Sure. So it was like, if you go to these meetings, you're going to meet this and this and this. You know what I'm saying? I understand all that. Here's, here's what he's saying is that, you know, he got married and that changed his life, but uh, Beebs, it does, doesn't it? Beebs, I'm gonna I'm gonna open up to you here. When you marry a supermodel, right? That is always gonna change your life. Yeah. Um, for a little bit, and then after we can that, Im- we can imagine, right? I feel like it did, James. I feel like it did. I think you're just maybe nine inches short. Blammo, and... yeah, a legal midget, but <laughs> with an extra nine inches, <laughs> with an extra nine inches, I would be that supermodel. You're my supermodel, and it changed my life. Oh my! But here's goodness. the difference between me and Beebs, right? besides maybe a half a billion dollars, sure. is this. Biebs got married at, what is he, 22, right? So yeah, a supermodel at 22 is definitely going to change your life for a little bit. Yeah, He's still Justin Bieber. And I thought, I thought this little fucker was going to die too, to be, be realsies about it, right? Yeah. But he keeps popping out with little hits here and there. Mm-hmm. And you're like, God damn it, you're a talented little SOB. Did you hear him on the Billie Eilish remix? No. Bad guy? Oh, no. Put that on at fucking max level. And Biebs pops in and he goes, I'm the bad guy. And then he Whoops. goes off classic Bieber in the middle mm. of this thing. And you're like, how did this happen? And I looked it up and it turns out Billie Eilish was like a gigantic fan of Justin Bieber. Yeah. It was like, I've always like wanted to do her, something with him. Um, when she was like a little, little tweeny with, and she looks way different. Really? But she had like Justin Bieber posters everywhere. Yeah. And she put that like in the post, um, you know, announcing that they were doing something together. I thought that was pretty good. Got it, got it, got it. Now she's like 17 talking about, you know, fucking people's dads and shit. And now not the Bieber crowd. Right. Right. So I was surprised when, you know, one of the biggest hits of the summer, she was like, you know, what I really want on this thing. Bieber. And it was like, huh? Yeah. It's like you, you're wearing a baggy sweatshirt at Coachella in 110 degree heat with black, you know, Home Depot paint all over your fingers like yeah. you want you want Bieber on your shit and it was bomb dude yeah like I couldn't believe it yeah I couldn't believe it when I heard it I was like god damn it yeah but so he opened up and said he almost died from drugs sex alcohol uh marrying a supermodel definitely helped him mm. um and then how sweet yeah and then he just said look as my talent progressed and I became ultra successful uh, I went through a good two-year stretch Stop of bragging. uh of all that shit because he was a 13-year-old kid who essentially became like mega world famous. Look, man, I don't, this is exactly what I expected him to happen. Or any kid that gets famous at 13, 14 years old. Yes. Coke, booze, sex, probably sex with their moms just so you can do it, right? Because he's probably sleeping with his own age and then scooping right up to the moms as well. Just because you can at that point. Right. Classic Bonaducci shit. You know, from the VH1 show, like mm-hmm. he said, he was, uh, or the Brady, who were the Brady, the Brady Bunch dude who was fucking the mom on the show. Talking about. The Brady Bunch, uh, it was Greg who was fucking the mom on the show, and they were like, "Hey, why oh, did you do that?" Yeah, and he goes, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, dude, that's a blind f- item." But yeah, he was like, "I'm super famous, man. Like, why wouldn't you?" And I was like, "Shit, 
I remember reading that going, God damn. Yeah, I guess not. Why not at that point, right? Right. So Biebskis. But I think Bieber is not dead because I think, I think, and I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I haven't met him. I think he's a good dude. Kid. Good dude. I think that the way that he started out and with his mom, and I think he has always been, sort, you know, religious. And I think he came out of it on the other side. He might go relapse into being a normal dude. Yeah, like this. But look, I think this he, marriage. The isn't, only person that could have gone through what he's gone through and come out as like, you know, pretty normal so far. Pretty normal. Yeah. Married, going to church all the time. Right, right, right. It's probably him. Now, if I'm being real, he's with his whole sitch here. Marriage is going to end in three years. Um, I can sure. call that. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. going to drop another banger album after as like that. an adult, and it's going to be very Justin Timberlake. He's and then be he'll be out. In Fuego, yes. And he'll then he's going to go out. He'll be spotted with uh, yes. William. Who's the other? The, the, he'll, Selena. Uh, he'll yeah. be spotted out with Selena. And yep. it's like, no, we're just friends. And then it'll be like the grainy photo of them making out yeah. at like a French restaurant. Yes. Very nondescript. Yeah. That French restaurant. Yes. But uh, that's who he probably should have ended up with. He'll probably kick back to her around 27, 28. Yeah, once Remarry, he levels off. Yeah. yeah, go back to the church, and then he'll have another hit album, and the career will be safe at that point. Sure. I think if he has one more banger album in his mid to late 20s, then it's like, holy shit, dude. You did it from 13 all the way to here, just like Timberlake, and then you're good on the rest of your life. All that pressure and all that shit is gone, right? right? Um, it is out the window at that point where you're like, all right, I just needed one more hit album. I remember Macklemore saying that, where he was just like, man... I thought I was going to be the fucking thrift shorts, thrift shop guy mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. And he goes, as soon as that next hit came in, dude, all the pressure was gone. We was just like, I'm good, man. After this. Yeah. I won't be vanilla ice. Right. So, um, which is going to leave there's me. There's nothing wrong with that, by the way. No. There is nothing wrong with vanilla ice. There isn't. There Am isn't. Am I right? There isn't. Allison, there isn't. She's about to. Bust out right now, and so am I. But look, it's fine. We're he's gonna keep houses. it under wraps. I know, and he's great. Um, but he's I'm, always been great. I'm gonna spin this into Macklemore though, because he just came out and apologized for having a racist haircut all these years. Oh, and coach, cultural appropriation. I, I right? guess I, like I, half of his hair was shaved. Yeah. The other top was what, what race is that though? It's straight white hair. Well, it's a different time, but yeah. It, it really wasn't a different time. Like, he had a white man's haircut for... He had the, like, lines shaved, remember? Who in gives the a side? shit? On top, it was a white man's haircut, right? Whatever you do to the sides of your whole shit, I mean, look at me right now. I am in mid-transition into a lesbian. Yes, and that is cultural appropriation of the Caitlin lesbian Jenner. community yes. and the trans community that you are... You're stealing from them right I am. now. So to Caitlyn Jenner, I want to apologize. Mm -hmm. uh, no, this is for the summer of Swayze, not for you. Yes. And this will be coming off very soon. Yes. But when you apologize for having a racist haircut, he's also the one who wrote that song about white guilt. I'm sorry for what's, what I've thought and or done and all that other shit. And you're just like, man, it is fine to be a white rapper. You really don't have to keep apologizing for all of this right. shit. Eminem doesn't. He didn't say shit no. about anything. Um, so I don't know what the deal is with Macklemore and this shit. When you start apologizing for your haircut, what's next after that? Yeah. Yeah. You were Yeezys. I'm going to apologize for wearing my Yeezys. I was cultural. I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know what I was fucking doing. I liked Macklemore when he was on drugs better. So maybe he should switch back to that. Do you know him from being on drugs? When we got a hold of his shit for the movies, uh, Brandon Bonfiglio, um, was the one who introduced me to Macklemore with those mixtapes. And I was like, dude, what's his story? This rocks, right? Yeah. Because some of those songs ended up making the first album. And he was like, oh, man, he lives in Seattle, does a bunch of drugs. Um, yeah, but I thought he was sober at that he point. He is. No, he's sober now. Mm. But like, there was a point in time where I guess his music wasn't popping. And he said it was because he wasn't focused enough or whatever, a.k.a. drug use. So, eh, it is what it is. But mm. I actually dig Macklemore shit. So if we could stop apologizing for being racist for no reason, that'd be great. Right. That'd be great. Uh, last but not least, I Jabes. We're out of the woods yet. But well, yeah, we no, are. Yeah, I think we're out of the woods. No, yeah. We're all yeah, done with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. We're all done with everything. I'm apologizing According for haircuts. Ross, it's solved. No. No more racism. No, we're Thank done with it. Thank you, Ross. We're, we're all done with it. You're oh, not, we're not apologizing for, for haircuts. 
good really for sorry. you. You've solved it. Yeah, I think I'm good on it. I'm good on it. Uh, Jamie, you date black ladies, right? Exclusively. Exclusively. Only black ladies. That is your jam. So according to Ross, we're good. We're good what are right? they all complaining about? You would never go about. home and apologize for your haircut to your lady and be like, hey, is this a little, did I take a little too much off the sides? Is this too black for you? you sh- <laughs> apologize what we did for the night before. Yeah. Fair. That's a lifelong full of apologies Fair. then for every day apologizing, he's apologizing for the night before. Dorian was a complete bust, by the way. Well, we'll see. Now, listen, you are really premature on this. Boy, it's down to a three. I keep getting texts from people like all over America because we're that one. Whenever we show up on a grid, like we're the one friends that everybody reaches out to. Are you guys safe? Yeah. Do you have a place? To, do you have a place to go? Is it is it terrible down there? Yeah. And I'm like, dude, I am. Well, because everybody else doesn't realize live there. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But that we they, deal with this all the time, and it's always just like a little bit of it's a, a little lot bit of, of wind. Rain. And, yeah. I know. I guess we got torched by that one last year, but um, with that other yeah. house. So uh, yes, we're fine in this <laughs> one. Uh, got knocked down yeah. to a cat too. The Bahamas. I don't think you'll ever get to go back to again. Yeah, no, uh, Nassau was fine. Was it really? Yeah. Jeez. It was way north of that. This thing hovered over there for like yeah, four so days Yeah, so Atlantis, straight. don't worry. You can go back to Atlantis. Can I go back to Atlantis? Mm, mm, totally Great. fine. Great. There's yep. a Nobu in there that I absolutely love. I know, you love. do love it. I do love. Last time we were in there, I loved it so much. I had cornrows, um, and the, the hostess did not want to seat us. No. Uh, I had to pull up my identification and show her that it was my birthday, because I had... Culturally misappropriated my cornrows and I had red, white, and blue beads Mm -hmm. in them and we sat down and had a nice birthday dinner. So hope that place survives so I can go back and do that again and make everybody else. Atlantis is fine. Feel uncomfortable. Uh, Now it's time to get to the revolutionary figure of the day. Shall we? We shall. I'm going to go back to the douche here, dude. Uh, Danny Bonna douche. Oh God. Yeah. That was a I fucking never know what you're talking about. Child singer who just did not come out of that the whole Ducher. shit. And what was it? Chasing Bon and Ducci. What was the VH1 show? I was hooked to that goddamn reality show. Um, bon and Um, Whatever it was. I watched it religiously and growing up Danny or something like that. Oh, yeah. Where, where he was. If you want to see the greatest scene in reality TV show history. He's on breaking a Bonaduce. breaking Bonaduce. That's so it. God good. damn it. So it was awesome. Good. Go and YouTube a video of him on a mm. skateboard in Venice, Wasted. walking into a liquor store at looked like nine, 10 a.m. Took an entire bottle of vodka, poured it into OJ. Yep. Drank the entire bottle and then got on a skateboard and throughout Venice at 10 a.m. Mm. I fucking got off the couch and just yep, yep, slow yep. handed him. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was the best. But rumor has it he turned out all right. He had one incident, though, that's an, that is an all timer. And I, this is another one that I'll highly recommend you look up. He got real fucked up on booze and pills before he went in. On, this is on, a, on the red carpet at a premiere. Took off all of his clothes. And was on the red carpet buck naked. He, he's taken so much steroids. His dick and balls were the size of uh, like a. An acorn. I, yeah, but it was like an acorn in a pile of autumn leaves. But yeah, it was yeah, yeah, a yeah, lot yeah, of red yeah. hair. So there was, I don't, mm-hmm, you're mm-hmm. trying to pick through that, that marshland. Like to see, Asian. Was yes, it Asian kind like of? Like a redheaded Asian man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're looking through the marsh, you know, where you're like, man, I, is that a log in there? Or is that a snake? Because I don't want my kids to go near it. Mm-hmm. Any who's. Yeah. He threw a punch toward a paparazzi member and they caught it mid, mid stride. With this, and you see this tiny dick and balls. It was my screensaver on my phone for close to three years until I left it open at a table. I was at a super high powered agency meeting, and right. I got a text message. And you know, when your phone lights up and you can see somebody else's screen saver, mm-hmm. it was the douche, full shriveled up dick and balls. And they were like, Why? This guy was like, Why do you have that? And he was super offended by it. And I was like, Oh man, I'm just a big doucher fan. Did not know anything about it, whatever. All he That's saw was doucher. what he thought was a red haired gay man with a dick and balls, just like kind of giving me a punch toward camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is what it looked like on my, uh, my screensaver. So to the doucher, know that you're loved. And I still miss and love that show. 
Why? Because he was functioning, and that was the best alcoholic doing a fucking reality show you will ever see. Piss off his wife every day and be like, "I'm sorry, I did it again." Yes, like, and he was super rational about it and hilarious, and I loved it. Whereas your shows, those those bitches just getting drunk midday, and it's like it kind of really never goes anywhere. With the Ducher, it was going somewhere. Yeah, it was always going somewhere. It was really going somewhere. Uh, this is a really fun show today, Japes. Think. Real proud of you. Think. Uh, for Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs>